David, what is up, dude? What up? God damn it. This is so sick, man. Thank you so much for taking the time today, dude. I am very excited for this. Of course, man. <laughs> I mean, I love the sunglasses. Shit. What <laughs> yeah, about sorry. I'm stealing your aesthetic. <laughs> so sick. Look, man, uh, I, I have to say, you know, like, my introduction to your work, obviously, through uh, Fear Before, uh, absolutely in love with it. Memory Drip comes out, and I am so, uh, so psyched on this, dude. Uh, being able to hear, you know, a little bit more of a deep dive into it, uh, the initial singles that came out. I, I was, uh, you know, kind of hesitant as far as hearing something else that wasn't feel before. And this shit is fucking awesome, man. Thank you uh, for the work, dude. Thanks for, for taking this on and uh, presenting this new project. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> kind of nerve wracking, honestly. Um, it was uh, very by chance, really. It was during the pandemic and um, just reached out to Marshall just because I was watching YouTube <laughs> during the pandemic <laughs> and I saw he had a fear before tattoo. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, okay. Um, Teenage Wrist put out a new record and they were doing a live performance of their album or just, um, just new songs and old songs and uh he reached down into his pedal board and he had the dancer uh tattoo on his arm <laughs> okay damn and, and, and uh i don't even watch youtube like that okay but the pandemic does things like that so <laughs> um, so sick holy shit and, uh, go ahead. uh so cam the old baby bass player of Teenage Wrist was no longer in the band and um, I was friends with him and when he left the band I was you know curious to what the new album was going to sound like without him in it and um, you know I had actually met Marshall because they're, they're from Colorado and they moved out to LA to do Teenage Wrist like as a you know, a bigger, like, launching pad, you know, honestly, um, out in L.A. Um, and I had met him, you know, once before, and I didn't remember that. But um, okay. so that's kind of how uh, um, they got into Fear Before. Um, and I I had met or knew Cam. I grew up, like, being friends with Cam. But I had not known that I had met Marshall before. So he was a fan of the band, and that's how, you know, he had the Fear Before tattoo. But when I reached out to him just to say, like, hey, like, I, you know, I saw your tattoo. I really like your new album. And that's when he was just like, what are you doing musically? Um, and do you want to do something musically again? And, you know, when people say that, they're like you want to do something musically it's usually like do you want to do something with my buddy with like else. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah no i don't <laughs> i really don't um, <laughs> and when it was like no no i i would want to write with you and it was like definitely uh, i want to do that Shit. so Damn. um and you know he was coming out to um he plays both him and cam um play with the the group 303 you know that, oh uh, yeah okay like the live yeah. live setup yeah. for them yeah oh, they okay. play yeah. live with 303 and they're playing a red rock show um uh, uh and they were coming out to do that and he was like i'll come out a day or two early and see if we could just write a song and and if we can um just mess or whatever so he came out and and uh we wrote um teacher nurse and that was the first of the memory drip songs oh shit okay and, uh, now like uh, through that 
through that initial like phase was that like uh you guys just kind of had that track and it was kind of like expanding from there or was there other stuff that initial like set uh set down that you kind of had like uh blueprints for um so so you I I've given you all the, the songs which come out next week. Um, so you kind of have a head start on what everybody's going to hear next week when the whole EP comes out. Mm -hmm. But um, you you kind of know that that's... Uh, uh, it's kind of hard to describe where the whole, you know, music kind of branches from because that okay. song is a lot more chill than yeah, you know kind of sure. where they all go branch out from so it's hard to really know what music you're gonna create you know like uh when my first band fear before started it was like you don't really know what your sound is you just kind of create you know mm -hmm. um those songs even when i started were already there for me you know like uh those guys already had those songs created as well so you kind of just it it comes organically um and those that song even marshall had that the, the kind of uh, song um, or that idea I think for a while that you know was a maybe a teenage wrist idea that didn't work um, oh, okay and it, it didn't quite fit for something that he had so you know you kind of take an idea and you run with it and and uh, see what you can make with it and my first idea sucked <laughs> You know, I didn't know what I was doing. It, it's so crazy that, you know, um, you never know what's going to come out. And like I said, this whole thing is such a crazy. I never thought I would be starting a music project. I, it's been seriously since Fear Before stopped, or at least since the last time I was in the studio to now this coming out it's been 15 years since my last release yeah shit, so dude. from the time that the self-titled fear before record came out and this one coming or this memory drip album coming out it's been 15 years so <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know what i'm doing it's scary <laughs> Just... I mean, with, within, like, you kind of mentioning that, too, within, like, that first, like, writing process, was it more of a feeling of, like, the the flow to it, or maybe what it was that you were writing about initially, you, you weren't really feeling, or what was, you know, that kind of, uh, that sense of, like, disconnect initially from, you know, kind of saying that you felt like it kind of sucked? Well, yeah, it's just, like, how to get it out, like, okay. some of the feelings okay. of, um, just uh like who am i um just kind of just trying to rediscover who you are and i guess just the timing of it too and like um just, just that it was just such a weird time during the pandemic of um just self-discovery and self-doubt and sure with yeah just... so within like how many writing sessions did you guys have before you ended up going like into the studio to record <laughs> i mean well just with technology these days and just the assets that we had i mean really it it was just a friend's studio that just straight in and recording demos. Oh, um, okay. I mean, from, I mean, you can call it a demo into, you know, one demo into the, like a finished, you know, second demo 
to okay. finish yeah. recording the second time. But yeah. I don't know. It helps with technology nowadays. I mean, yeah. from being uh, in a band and you kind of mentioning that, you know, there's a lot of times where like the hassle of, you know, or I shouldn't even say hassle because sometimes that's where the magic comes from is like sitting in a room and just everybody, you know, having a good time and maybe some drinks or whatever the fuck. Uh, but, you know, certainly like when you get a little bit older and there's jobs involved and all this other bullshit, then it's like, hey, uh, we can send files back and forth. And what do you think of this drum part? What do you think of this guitar part? Like, it helps. <laughs> yeah, we did like second versions like a year later with like when Justin joined, you know, a year later, we did a real version in a real studio. Okay. So, okay. Uh, but, you know, it is a process for sure. So we went back and forth like uh, Marshall came out to Colorado. I went out to L.A. a couple times. So, oh, okay. It was a process. I mean, so as far as, you know, like, what, what the, while, you know, keeping on this momentum of this, this, the EP, uh, you mentioned that next Friday it's going to be releasing them, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. On the 21st, everything, all, all the songs will be so, out. So, I mean, let, you know, let's just kind of start with that. And, you know, with all this um, super exciting having new music and you kind of touching on uh, this being the first thing in, like, 15 years, the, the first track we have on here, Self-Aware, uh, you know, which was your guys' second single. Was this, you know, initially kind of was this, uh, uh, something that once was recorded and down, you know, you guys wanted to have it be the album opener or did you have something slated that just ended up getting moved at the last minute? Um, no, I think we, it took a little while to figure out track listing. Um, but it is like a strong, like, it is a banger. Um, Marshall is I think probably the one that figured out track listing a little better than me. I I don't I couldn't figure out how to, how to, I, I couldn't figure out the sequencing because I was I'm I'm not very good at that. <laughs> Everybody has their strengths with shit. Yeah, I, I can I can dig that. And you mentioned it too, like that's you know, certainly a, a, a point of momentum, you know, where it starts. And I feel like throughout the EP, you know, there's this really strong kind of, uh, I, I guess, you know, to say heaviness initially, and then it kind of gets into this like ebb of chill, but still like real heavy, you know, we'll kind of get into further with it. But, uh, and then even into, you know, you have uh, the next track, Good For It. But um, before that, I just wanted to ask as far as within self-aware, this, you know, this initial track, you know, a little bit of context behind the, the lyrics, close the door behind you, uh, cover me in white roses. That's what you say, right? Cover yeah. me in white roses. Yeah. So yeah. sick. God, yeah. It's, it's... Um, uh, the, the female vocal on the track is actually um, Marshall's ex-girlfriend. Uh, she okay. uh, helped actually uh, do some of the writing on the song as well. And she helped flesh out some of the vocals that you know just some of the ideas that i you know needed a little bit of fleshing out on um she he does some um producing for her as well mm -hmm. um she is a really talented uh uh video producer in la as well she does like music video work um, oh damn and uh yeah, she does some really cool work. Um, and she's in, uh, she does her own music uh, stuff too. Marshall produces some of her uh, music as well. Um, she goes by uh, Sister Void. You should check out oh. her stuff. Oh, shit. Okay. Really cool. yeah, all... Now, this is Lindsay, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Damn. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to check that out for sure. What Now, did she help as far as, you know, within that line too? You know, there's like, something very haunting behind you know just hearing it as a as a listener yeah she came up with like the roses like um and you know the white roses is just like a very like clean and just like um like a, a neutral um just coming forward and uh just coming out kind of moving on kind of way of 
getting past your, I don't know, I was coming out of uh, just the shame part of my past. You know, I, I went through a divorce where I was just like over it and just like I hid away a lot of my emotions for a long time. Like I, I just didn't want to talk about it like even when i was going through it i hid away from my family and stuff like things that i didn't deal with um things that were out of my control just um a shame that um it wasn't even my fault really you know like uh things that uh um I took upon myself that I shouldn't have, um, where <laughs> I didn't even tell them, you know, that I was going through where, um, you know, the first time it happened when it, when my wife was cheating on me, that I didn't even tell my parents, you know, uh, and for, oh, for like a whole year, I didn't tell them that like my wife was having an affair until the the second time it happened you know when oh, when she dude. finally when my wife finally left um after the second affair uh and and she left and i had to tell them that like oh yeah it had been happening for a year <laughs> and so it was just like well uh, they all thought it happened out of the blue and i was like oh no sorry it's been happening for a long time and, so, and it's just like, like all that stuff is just like such a heavy burden and I was just carrying it for so long. So um, that, that stuff just like eats away at you and, and if you're just like dealing it with like by yourself, Internally, it's just, yeah, it's, yeah, a, lot. It's just uh, a lot to deal with. So my uh, advice is just to like don't do that shit to yourself so. <laughs> close the door behind you yeah kind yeah of, uh, in yeah, a so. sense yeah it, it, it brings a brings a closure to that yeah for sure and yeah, uh and so, lights it yeah it'll just make you feel stupid at the end of the day so yeah man i i, I appreciate you know like and i i think that's kind of something too that it, it's it's uh you know difficult mentioning some of those things and by no means do I want you to have to, you know, feel that you have to, you know, spill out more than, you know, are comfortable with. But as far as hearing, you know, context behind some of these things, the lyrics behind, you know, like Fear Before for Gear, you know, like there's there's lots of, you know, lots, lots of things that certainly, you know, you can tell that there's like a personal like push into it. But um, there was something really about like the memory drip where listening through, you know, a lot of the stuff I'm like, oh, boy, there's, you know, like some like shit that's being like put out and probably uh you know making you feel a lot better therapeutic in a yeah sense. Like, i can imagine you know even if it's like out. embarrassing you gotta just like let it out and like i just tried to hide it for so long that you at the end of the day you're gonna end up talking about it even if it's like in a in a song you yeah, know like sure uh, it's a beautiful thing yeah, that we have that outlet <laughs> at the end of like 10 years you're going to end up putting in a song anyways so you might as well do it. <laughs> i mean so okay so so next up we have the initial uh a single which you put out which is good for it uh absolutely ripping um was was you know just upon even the first like listen through uh made me very excited you know uh it kind of taking us back through that as far as what you know when you first are hearing this song like what was your first uh you know jump into what where you were inspirationally as far as for writing for it yeah and and that's the same as well it's like you're gonna be there's so much to live for and just like it's it, it's on the same lines it's 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 strong you know it's that this one's like the heaviest song on the record um so sick i i didn't know it was gonna get to the like i didn't know i was gonna be screaming on on songs again honestly and especially like from the first song 
um, when it was honestly more like Baker wavy, you know, like it was <laughs> more chill and like yeah. more just vibey. Um, when I started screaming on this song, it was like, okay, like maybe it's gonna get to these levels. And I don't know, it was like honestly really fun. And I don't know, it was just cool to, to do it again. Um, but, but so initially you weren't like, uh, well, or at least the initial like thought of it was you weren't really thinking about your wanting to scream over this, it was going to be more of a I just uh, didn't sure. know. Oh, okay. Um, okay. It was it's just like really organic because every song just felt very different. Um, mm -hmm. Each each time we went into the studio or like worked on a song, it was like you know getting it, getting to up to the mic. It was like oh shit, <laughs> like. I don't know if I can do it. It was just like that getting it out. Back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> what What about the treatment for the video, uh, which uh, turned out absolutely sick? Uh, seeing some of the light boxes again, you know, it's like, man, we we've been waiting, dude. We've been sitting here hanging out. Yeah, um, those things have been sitting in my in my parents' basement for years. Um, That's the same ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh shit! It's awesome. Yeah, my dad is happy to get those things out of there. <laughs> um, Justin and I went to Home Depot and got a bunch of new plexi, but um, cut up a bunch of new white plexi. And on the day of the video, we got, got clear plexi, and I had to get um the the fog like spray put uh like the window spray paint like the the foggy one that looks like so it wouldn't like uh it wouldn't fog over or it wouldn't um the one that looks oh like God. you know snow or yeah okay it makes it opaque gotcha. and it didn't look like it was working it was like didn't make it foggy enough and i was like fuck dude it's like i'm gonna have to go back to you know like find the right shit and then you know five minutes later it it was actually fogging it up but it was right oh, <laughs> okay okay um it was okay um it, it ended up working thankfully but uh yeah it was good um i bought maybe like four hundred dollars worth of fake flowers and <laughs> oh, shit. those petals and shit it was it was awesome we filmed all the uh, uh we filmed two videos actually so the video for flowers will come out on friday uh, next friday as well um, oh shit okay. so uh we filmed um all the live scenes at Seventh Circle. It's a, um, a DIY um, venue here, here in Denver. And then all the other scenes um, at my at my house that I'm in right now. Um, oh, okay. We filmed it in my uh, uh, bed upstairs and in the bathtub. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, so like in my bed, Bed, um, with like all the flowers around me and like rose petals coming down and then dunking my head in the in the water that was like kind of miserable but like every <laughs> every video I've ever I always say every video I've done is always kind of miserable so. <laughs> just add it to like a, the, the list there yeah how, how whether it's like with like your head underwater what's that how did that shot go with, uh, you know, with like under under the water there and, and your face coming? Yeah, in? there's like a GoPro at the bottom of like a trash can, and then oh, like okay. my head just going in into the into the trash can, and just dunking my head just straight under, <laughs> and like trying to, well, trying to sing 
and like, like we didn't use much of the singing um, oh, no. shots, but like trying to dunk my head as fast as I could, all my uh, my arms and my chest um, and, and my forehead were all bruised just from dunking it in like a hundred times. Um, just like a ring around my whole body and my forehead from just dunking it in all day or all hundred times or whatever. End up in an emergency uh, room. They're like, what the fuck did you do? Just an idiot. Yeah. Oh, God. Just, now, was that like in a day then that you guys had to shoot for the, for the song? Just like, like yeah, we spent um, a day doing it um, uh, here at my house, and then a, a day at the um, music venue. Sick, that's that's awesome. I mean, and and like I mentioned too, like such a rad way, you know, to be introduced to the band. Uh, that, yeah, I mean, the yelling over that, I feel like you know, it just adds like a texture, uh, you know, from being a fan that that it is appreciated. I wouldn't say necessary because we're going to dig into, you know, the, the following songs now to where hearing those, I'm like, you know, you still handle the parts, you know, without having to yell. Uh, I, I personally love hearing that and that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, reminiscent of the fear before days and hearing that shit, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's a, a nice comfort, if you will, a comfort food from, uh, from the past. But, uh, <laughs> but next week we have flowers. So you mentioned this track. Uh, and, yeah. you know, this is kind of where, like, the real chill uh, era of the EP kind of comes in. Uh, really cool, mesmerized. Is it a keyboard, like, in the in the introduction of it? Yeah. Okay. And, and rad, uh, you know, overall musically. But so you say, you know, this is kind of your first, like, take on this. Uh, you know, what, what goes into, uh, you know, this track? And was this you know, kind of a guidance for Brandon Proff's uh, co uh, uh, cover art for uh, the EP? Yeah, um, this song, uh, this song, song kind of means a, the most to me. Um, this song has, or this song is about my grandfather passing. Um, it was just the flowers song in general is about I wore this flower shirt to his funeral when he passed um, just you know when more when at funerals most people just wear black and it's just really somber but it was just a more of a positive you know memorial and uh you know the line <clears throat> you know the line uh sorry uh, sorry no no you're, you're good if you wanna you know if you want to move on to we can go to a different uh we can go to no you're good too okay The flowers in bloom, we, we pick them knowing that they die. It's just like when you pick somebody and, and you just know that they're going to pass. And, and just the same way, like when when you pick a flower and it's just, it's a momentary thing. And it's just like a cool little, it's just a little line, but I, it's one of my favorite lines in the in the whole EP and it's just a little thing, but it's my favorite. And sometimes the, the littlest things are like the most important. And so it's just a small thing, but I sometimes little things like that choke me up and sure. I don't know, it's still important to me. So sorry, I got choked up. No, like no, <laughs> and I didn't no. expect to. And it's like sometimes little things like that kind of, and then I just kind of get like, I don't know. I'm gonna keep going. But. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, it's a, it's the beautiful thing with music, and it's a, you know, and I think it's something that as musicians, 
uh, we're lucky to have because you can look back at something like that to be able to, you know, kind of have a time capsule of uh, something, you know, that's, in, that's important. And mm -hmm. I would not say anything, uh, you know, unfortunate or embarrassing, like it's rad. Uh, and there's lots of moments in this where I can honestly <laughs> say, listening to it, not even knowing what the fuck is going on, but just hearing certain aspects uh, can kind of choke you up. You know, there's a lot of emotion behind not only lyrically, not only vocally, even the music behind it. Uh, yeah. You know, there's just some moments where uh, it's it's deep, man. So I, you know, I, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's a, it's great track. Uh, and then we have followed by Teacher Nurse. Uh, throughout this thing, dude, catchy hooks. You're you're just you're you're gonna have a hard time walking away from this and not fucking thinking of uh, a couple of the the moments in this. But what what can you tell us about you know with this track and you have the you know the the line there? She's not your teacher or your nurse. Uh, for what it is you've already already learned. Yeah. Um, so with, I mean, I'm a 40 year old now. I just turned 40 last month. And, um, you know, with relationships, I did this a lot when I was in the band. Um, and I found, you know, now that I'm, when I was in the band, I internalized a lot of like relationships and, you know, since COVID and I did the same then, you know, when I'm alone now and like for a long, long time still, you know, when I'm, I kind of like imagine, you know, like these like relationships you know like you know when i was with somebody even you know on the road even when i'm with somebody i just like imagine my relationships like hmm. you know like uh in my head you know when i was with a girl just like thinking about my relationship and just like daydreaming it and it's just like not even real I'm just like imagining my relationship in my head and it's like it's not even real it's just like it exists and it's just like uh it's not even a thing so and i it's it's not even being communicated it's just this thing that exists in my own head and it's not real it's just like this an imaginary daydream and um and that's kind of what this song is it's it's just it exists and it's not communicated and <clears throat> it's it just it's not it it's not real it's uh and that's kind of what it is it's it's my red flags it's it's not real and it and that's what teacher nurses it's just being alone in kind of a not a good place it's just uh alone and kind of not, not I'll work possibly from distance mm -hmm. and uh you know not being at home at times and trying to uh yeah i i i can i can see that for sure i mean and you know musically like i mentioned too like this throughout this thing uh where there's just as many you know like deep moments or, or, or meaningful lines, you know, that there is, uh, you know, musically too. So, um, an absolutely like rad song. And, you know, there's kind of different times where I kind of got the feeling where it's like maybe even somebody taking care of somebody and it's like, well, I've already learned this and I don't need to necessarily have this, uh, step into a, you know, another, another stone further, but, um, just self-interpretation, you know, nothing, nothing to add to it. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely like, it's a, it's about a crush, but it's just like, un, it's somebody I'll never have, but yeah, it's somebody that I, I really cared about and, and still do, but it's just, it's not real. Yeah. Okay. Sick. Uh, so past this, we have elsewhere and then we have a part one and we have a part two. So uh, the first one, I have to say maybe the catchiest hook, um, and you know, when, when, when this thing comes out next week, other people are going to say the same, I, I think, uh, yeah, know, beyond I, these two tracks, I, what I really can you like tell us? These. I really like these part 
<laughs> <laughs> uh, what was there like where where was the point where you're like okay i'm gonna kind of have uh this initial moment and then i want to do a you know a continuation after this or was it not much of even that well i think both of these like they exist in such contrasting stories are just uh they they peak in such different ways um where they one of my good buddies chad calls them fireworks where one gets to such highs that it they exist on their own so i don't know like i i really love them both so i don't know i, I just really like I, I i could see them being one but i don't know i i, I just didn't want one to i i just didn't want one to ruin the other i guess <laughs> Sure. That well, makes sense. And I, I guess to add on top of that, you know, like one thing with both of these tracks that I kind of felt was fitting for both of them was you have, you know, maybe this way and maybe this is just me thinking of it too much, but you have a way of, you know, allowing instrumental parts to really breathe and kind of let there be their own thing without, you know, jumping on top of every single part. Like when you're initially writing, do you sit down and have, you know, a lot that you throw at it and then maybe strip back a little bit? Or is it, kind of a piece you know like song by song as far as well your sometimes i sometimes i have too many ideas for one <laughs> okay. thing and then sometimes i don't have enough at all and you know sometimes i have to sit down with marshall and he's like okay like we need a lot more for this and he's like trying to pull things out you know and and that's like for you know you know, for self-aware, um, that's when, like, he brought in Lindsay to, you know, kind of pull some of those things out. Um, and, and I think for Elsewhere Part 2, one of the, that day, uh, um, when I was in L.A., I went to Forest Lawn. Um, it's like a cemetery and i like i was out and i just like went to the cemetery and i came back and i like i came with like a bunch of ideas like <laughs> after sitting in the cemetery <laughs> that day um <laughs> but it was like i don't know those things are just they come when they come i i really like deadlines i don't do <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. i'm the kind of kind of person that stays up the night before you know i'm i'm doing the like i'm doing the studio and i'm i'm up all night and i'm just like scribbling and i always have like <laughs> tangible things and i'm i'm not like the kind of person that like has my laptop out and I, i'm always like hard like cock Copies something of physical. everything, sure. something physical. Um, I'm very much, you know, uh, I'll be changing the line, you know, up to the last second. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not happy with it until, you know, the last second. So uh, it's yeah. it always changes. So who okay. knows? You know, within that, that first track, you know, it's like musically not, so to speak, heavy. But when the keyboard part comes in and the drums start kicking with like the tom part, I'm just like, holy shit. Like, it's it's funny, you know, when you're younger and you think of like heavy as like Slayer or, you know, Cannibal Corpse or something. But then, you know, kind of like hearing parts like that, you know, almost like uh, when I'm initially hearing like that keyboard part, it was almost like a Kanye West like production, like hearing it my headphones holy shit, this thing is hard, uh, you know, and then part two kind of returning to it being a little bit more riff based, uh, you know, almost like some doomy esque feeling parts. You yeah, know, it gets Marshall, a like... lot heavier and that it gets 
closer, I would say part, or yeah, part two gets closer to Fear Before, like, screaming than any of the other stuff, you know, vocally, I would say. Yeah, um, for sure. And part one is probably the prettiest song, I would say. Hookiest. So, well, well, I don't know if that's even a, a word either, but like, yeah. <laughs> within within part two, was there anything, you know, like I know you mentioned, you know, tangible and kind of things with in the past in the studio and having different ways of recording for effects. Uh, the effect that you have on your voice, was there anything that, you know, you were doing in studio as far as for uh, for that? Uh, um, Rather than a, an actual effect, I mean. Marshall would be the one to ask. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I don't know. He's he's the wizard on that. I don't okay. I don't know what he's doing to make me sound good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember reading or I think maybe even hearing something there was like a, a cone of some sort that somebody cut out and you had the microphone around it and had to sing into that and it gave like a weird effect to the, uh, the vocal off of that. Oh maybe, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's idiot. like a keyboard, like, like. Oh, oh no! Man, oh. I wish I fucking would have had this pulled up. It was like an article of some sort. I swear it was. Uh... Anyway, yeah. Well, the the uh, the the vocals on this track are are. It's like a slight, you know, kind of like muffled sound, almost like distant, uh, but are sick. I mean, you're you really kind of belting out over this thing. And uh, it shines through and, and yet, you know, doesn't feel like it's getting like overly aggressive. I don't think I think it still, you know, melts with the rest of it and uh, still having a, a feeling of like something fucked is going on, but somehow it's still beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I really like the melodies on this one. I, it's yeah, it's really fun. I'm I'm really excited about this one. I, it's fun to sing and. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, vocal, I hope people vocal. like it. I, I, I have no doubt, dude. I mean, especially, uh, you know, I, I know, like, you probably don't look back at like comments or anything like that, but just different things on even YouTube. I mean, even in the last like weeks, people have been like commenting, like, "Oh man, I wish that Fear Before we're doing da da da." da. It's like, well, there's there's things going on, you know. I like message those cats, I'm like, "Hey, check this out, dude. There's, there's some stuff coming out." So yeah, sure. it's, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so so we have the, the, the final track here, uh, uh, One Piece Puzzle. Uh, and I have to say, I mean, honestly, my favorite track to this, there's a little bit of a blend of everything from this wrapped up, um, you know, and digging into like different feelings, I just kind of wanted to get, you know, your impression as far as, uh, you know, where you were going with this, where your head was and, uh, and writing the song. Yeah. Um, well, I'm actually getting one. I've had one right now. My cognitive ability, I have a brutal migraine right now. My hands are numb. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> and dude. like sometimes, like, I don't know what it is, but I've been getting them for, you know, over, you know, over 18 years now. But it, it just comes on and, you know, I'll be able to tell when I'm getting them because, you know, sometimes I search for words and uh, and it just like I can't come up with them, and you know, and I'll just feel feel my hands go numb and sometimes like my lips or my tongue will go numb, and uh, I if it's really bad I can't even read. So like if I'm working, at, if I'm bartending. And I'll go up to the register, or if somebody is like, "Hey, can I close the Smith tab?" And I'll go over, and I'll I can't even read Smith, <laughs> and oh, I know it's bad, and uh, uh, it, it's it's scary because you know it'd be cool if I was, you know, like doing drugs, and that was the point <laughs> the reason of, for point it. of it all. <laughs> but you know, if I'm yeah. just trying to do my job and I can't that's it just sucks and it's just like debilitating you know but it's just um if I can't feel my fucking fingers it's just uh 
it's it just sucks yeah so i when i'm getting migraines and um all the time and it's you know twice a week where it's um you know my vision is going out you know on you know one side side of my whole you know my whole left or right side is white and Mm -hmm. shiny and i can't even function um that's kind of what one piece puzzle is it's like this one if i could just get one thing going right um everything would just be okay and um you know it's it's uh that's kind of just what this song is and it's um it's just just trying to get my life back in order and I'm trying to be healthy and do all the right things. And, you know, <laughs> it's kind of just making fun of myself, you know, drink the glass of water, eat before you leave the house, take, take a cold, cold shower. shower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like making peace with the doctors um it's trying everything you know it's yeah. it's it's all of it so um it's just trying to be honest with myself and be okay with it and live in the moment and try um just try to be okay and um uh so yeah if i if i don't seem okay or if i just seem out of it it's just because i'm trying and and um yeah it's just sorry dude it's just part of my life and um and i I am okay so it's all right well and i I mean getting more context i personally love this and we kind of touched base on this you know off of the fact but i've had migraines since i've been little and somehow I don't know what it, what exactly it is, but Excedrin has actually helped me head off getting to that point. But it would be my main senses where it would be like my taste, uh, sounds, lights, all of that shit. You kind of mentioned the one eye and the, the, the vision getting blurry. like, uh, And I guess having somebody writing a song about that uh, is pretty wild. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I knowingly like have had somebody, you know, like kind of touching on this. <laughs> yeah. too, so. um, uh, and, and it's... It sucks. I mean, there's, you know, like you mentioned, kind of like the debilitating uh, aspect of it. Um, There's, you know, a lot of times where you're trying to sit here and be okay and not be, you know, shitty or not be pissy to somebody, but it's like, you can't really explain until you're like out of that shadow, so to speak. Yeah. Man. Well, I mean, all in all, uh, honestly, dude, this EP is so sick. Uh, I had heard, you know, kind of grumblings that you guys are also writing more you also have other stuff um you have a show coming up if not a couple of shows right yeah we have a few we have um one in colorado springs for our first that's on the 24th and then denver on the 25th and then we are opening for gatsby's american dream on the 28th in la that's so sick yeah it's gonna be absolutely awesome. I, I mean do you have any like intention with I, I i know i only got to see you guys once as far as within fear before but uh within you know like doing a big setup for a live show for fear before no 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 i'm sorry for memory trip for say that again so as far as for your guys' live shows coming up for memory drip um, I was just mentioning, you know, before you guys had, you know, like a cool production stage wise. Oh, yeah. Before is, is memory drip going to be having, you know, something going on out there? Uh, fake flowers and um, like fake trees. And we, we do have lights that Justin has programmed. Um, so we oh. will have production. Okay. So yeah, I, <laughs> all those flowers from the video. Um, I don't know. So we don't have a van because we only have like one out of town show. We were gonna try to borrow a friend's van, but it wouldn't make it to LA just for one show. 
Um, okay. So we, I'm going to try to bring as many as I can on my Southwest flight, but I don't know how many I can bring. Um, so, but we'll at least try to bring some. So sure. always try. Okay. Well, to I mean, I, and, and I can say, even if not, you know, like I should preface uh, with me saying any of this other shit, the music's good enough. Uh, there isn't anything yeah. that needs to be up there. <laughs> so, I mean, always trying to do something though, see. like any, any amount of, of thought I think matters. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, totally. Totally. I dig it. Um, is there any sort of physical release, uh, a set or any idea as far as if you guys are going to be putting out anything? Um, we have a hundred cassettes coming. So Sick. that's, that's, um, at least for the first initial thing, like everything that we're doing is, um, just on our own accord. So for the first initial, until we find somebody that can facilitate us to do vinyl, then we'll, we'll figure that out next. Sure. Awesome, dude. I, I cannot wait. Uh, you know, and, and I, I want to say I have, you know, more uh, prepared and all that, but you having a migraine and being sympathetic with that. No, Do no, you want to no. wrap right there? No, no, we can keep going. Oh, okay. I just want to okay. put that out <laughs> okay. there just because, I mean, I, I deal with this all the time. I, I'm, I just want oh, to let, okay. let you know what I'm, what I got going. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I just didn't want to be, you know, somebody's like, oh, you know, you're sitting here absolutely suffering. I'm like, oh, okay. And next we have to talk about fucking, like, dude, I'm dying over here. I, I know the feeling, man. I, I absolutely uh, do not want to shove that aside. So I wanted to ask for sure. <laughs> so, so next Friday we have uh, the EP that's releasing in full. Absolutely sick. Truly. I mean, from a fan, you know, for a long time, uh, it makes me even more excited that it rules like the way that it does. So. I have been, you know, playing it uh, probably more than I should be and, uh, you know, playing drums along with it. Justin awesome. absolutely rocks on it. Uh, oh, yeah. Marshall has been ripping it. So it'd be sick. I, uh, if something, you know, outside of uh, Colorado and California, if you get somewhere like by the Midwest, I would love to see it, uh, see it live for sure. So yeah. they're very sick. <laughs> so, uh, so kind of dialing back here. Um, you know, I didn't want to cut off, you know, our, our, our talk with that because memory drip's so sick, but just kind of, you know, initially, uh, uh, all these years ago, you know, kind of going a little bit earlier into, uh, you know, your work in music prior to Fear Before, did you have any musical, you know, uh, interests or any, any musical as far as performance wise? Um, before Fear Before? Yeah. Um, no, no, not at all. Um, I grew up in Southern California um, and I you know always wanted to be in a band um, I I just always liked music my dad never played at all my my grandfather had like acoustic guitars all around the house he could never play at all he was really into like country music. Um, he was like a self-professed like cowboy. <laughs> he was, like, <laughs> he, like, like at like at like take your grandfather to school day. He, like told my my whole class he was like a cowboy <laughs> and like. <laughs> So sick. Yeah, it was like what an energy to have. <laughs> yeah, it was like he was like, dude, is your, awesome. does your grandfather oh, okay. have cows? Like, no. <laughs> but he was just like a funny dude. But um, rips. yeah, he he gave me an acoustic guitar, and I always wanted an electric guitar. And I asked my my parents for an electric guitar. And for Christmas, they gave me, it was like my 10th, maybe I was nine or 10, I can't remember. I got a fucking, one of those like toy, like, it was just like one of those like push buttons. Like, it wasn't <laughs> like, a, it was like one, it was like, 
one of those ones where you just like got like the little whammy bar and yeah, strings, but it yeah, like three attached buttons. It was like <laughs> worse than uh, that's sick. Worse than like the <laughs> video game ones. That, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay. There's like that's a picture awesome. of it somewhere. I'll have to pull up. But Damn. yeah, I don't know. I still <laughs> pretended like I was a rock star and like sat on my bed or you know yeah. on the out my window or something, you know. <laughs> but uh, I finally got you know for middle school an electric guitar and I I had some lessons for a while and I I played you know for a couple years in middle school and you know that was cool. But I, I had a a cool teacher that I played a couple um you know lessons with um a bass player and a drummer and I think we played like a few like Green Day songs and like uh oh, shit. Okay. maybe I want to say like a Bo Diddley song or something. And okay. and I was like the only, one of the only ones that could get through a whole song. And it was cool to be able to play like with other people. Mm -hmm. And um but as soon as I could play a song I I just didn't like it anymore. <laughs> like it's for me music was like uh like a magic trick. So as soon as I learned a song, I just didn't like it anymore. So if I learned like a Nirvana song or like a, you know, Smashing Pumpkins song, as soon as I learned it, I just didn't, it just kind of ruined it for me. Uh, it's just kind of the way music is for me. So I, I kind of just, it's kind of why I like, singing more i guess so okay. Okay. um i was gonna ask if you ever got into like skating as far as like learning a kickflip and then being like okay now i need to go on some because that's not cool anymore i can do it uh maybe um but i was never really good at skating i well i was <laughs> more of like a gap i was i was like i like big gaps and like maybe just like big board slides downstairs and um i i wrecked myself so hard doing like big gaps and stuff so like i would i would do stuff like that and then just like wreck my tailbone so hard that like oh, i couldn't even God. stand up so i'd like hit my tailbone so hard that i couldn't stand up straight and then just like curl up into a ball and just like, be done for the day <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Or like, or just like wreck and like, like hit my head so hard that I just was done. Um, so that's probably why I had so probably much migraine head issues. issues. Yeah, exactly. Um, Shit. Uh, anyways, back to music and stuff. Um, in high school, I had friends that were in like ska bands and stuff. Um, and like like punk bands in high school and when I was a freshman in California um, that played at like uh, Chain Reaction. Oh, it was back then, the venue that's Chain Reaction now, it used to be called Public Storage Coffee House. Oh, and weird. Yeah. And that. Yeah, it's still, the floor there still says like PS, like Public Storage. And like the oh, mosaic okay. floor there, and that, and that's like where I would first like go to all ages shows, and that place was yeah, it was really cool. Like seeing my friends play there, and like getting rides home, like first time riding in like a friend's car. Like my dad would give me a ride there, and then get a ride home, yes. and oh, yeah. and that was. Like, <laughs> first time seeing you know how how like it would how to do it and like uh the 
like bands like Homegrown, you know, the band Homegrown. Okay. Yep. They were from um, El Medina High School, and they were getting really popular and playing with like bands like uh, MXPX and like bands like uh, I don't know bands like like, uh, like Face to Face and Ignite. Uh, uh, I was really into bands like uh, like One King Down and Bane and okay. like uh, I started getting into stuff like uh, Zayo and yeah and, and heavier stuff like that and I didn't even know that was like they were Christian. <laughs> They're like, because it was. This is like recent. evil. That I found that out, and that was like it was so evil sounding. Yeah, yeah. Um, that like the late nineties and two thousands, like that wasn't a thing. And then I don't even know. I, I mean, I guess I don't know a whole ton about them. Uh, I have close friends that are obsessed with that band and like talk about like early like late nineties, early two thousands, like Christian like hardcore metal yeah i didn't even know it was a thing then yeah and then so then my family my dad got a, a job in the late 90s like tech boom in colorado or like yeah moved the family to colorado in the late 90s tech boom and uh moved the family out here to Colorado and then like Columbine happened. Mm -hmm. So like I had no friends here in Colorado <clears throat> and then Columbine happened. And then I had like double no friends. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, like, when I moved here, I was like, Oh, I'm going to be like, it's, I'm going to be cool. You know, I'm from California and I'm going to be like popular. And yeah. it was like, like no was it and just, calm... just like like the music and style you're saying or just from being yeah like, I was like an outside i'm gonna okay i'm gonna be like cool i like cool music and i'm from california and that's gonna be cool mm -hmm. and it was like nobody likes blink 182 and <laughs> oh, nobody man. likes mxpx and like face to face and <laughs> black wagon <laughs> and then it it just wasn't cool to like Was any of that shit okay and um and then i and then combine happened and then it was just like no friends and then i don't know i don't remember exactly how it happened but it was I, chugger the the second guitar or the other guitar player and in, in fear before was like hey you want to meet my uh my bandmates at, at my locker in between classes and that's how i met like the rest of the the band because i only knew chugger and that's how i met the the whole band in between classes and then i ended up just being best friends with the rest of the guys and just started going to like their practices every day and then we just started hanging out all the time they were <laughs> they were in a pop punk band called 36 flip and yeah. they practiced every day and that, that's how i started hanging out with them and <clears throat> they practiced all the time and over the course of you know hanging out for probably a year they you know how influences go that we all shared music and I, you know, pushed them into heavier and heavier stuff. And uh, like their, their influences changed into like a little more like Thursday ish and till like Adam started needing, needing a little bit like yelly parts and stuff. And I started like just, little burst like yeah yeah like stuff <laughs> and his like guest vocal stuff and then it needed like yells and 
slowly but surely. Yeah, slowly but surely, it, it it got more and more. And I think for a summer, they changed their band name to The Art of Falling for like a, a summer. Oh, okay. And then after that, then it changed to Fear Before the March of Flames, and then and then uh, I joined after that. Well, they, oh, they, it was gonna be our friend Garrett, and then and then I threw a fit, and then I I pushed my way into the band after that. <laughs> You're like, I've been here, motherfuckers. No way. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> they they let him try out and they said okay you can do it and I said no I'm you're not even gonna let me try I think that's bullshit like I should be able to do it and yeah I, I, I... <laughs> okay so I think uh, you know obviously everybody's story is like it's individual it's not to say that you know that it has to be this way but as far as like you know for vocalists i think you know there's different times where like speaking with somebody and they're like oh at one point i you know tried drums or i was kind of doing things with like bass and as far as like a cadence in those things but you know you and not really taking on any instruments or anything those i, I i'm assuming is like a trial and error you know when you're like first starting and just trying to see but you know were you singing along to any like hardcore records or like screaming to certain things to kind of test that out before doing that in front of people? Or was it just like, I'm going to fucking do whatever my body can oh, do? Oh yeah. I think I had zero shame. I used to probably yell and scream along to anything in the car. I was probably like that. <laughs> I was probably like yeah. the windows down at like the stop sign or at the stoplight, you know, just like, Bleh. I was probably like, <laughs> It was probably like old, old. I was probably all like the old Zayo and um, uh, old eighteen visions. Um, probably Bane. Um, probably one king down. Probably um, fuck. I probably should have gone back into my CD book to think of all the old stuff that I was listening to. No, that's cool. And I, I mean, I appreciate too that, you know, it's just kind of like, these are the things that are at your memory right now and it not being like a super calculated thing. So I, you know, yeah. I, I, I dig that. Um, you know, it's like <laughs> smashing pumpkins. Um, and it's like, there's a lot of things that, like screaming that you don't even think about like deftones um uh oh, fuck um shit you know even in like not to say comparison like, but even like Go ahead. Uh, like silver chair there's like okay Screaming and a lot of stuff that you wouldn't even think about, like, yeah. or even like, like um, strung out, like a lot of heavier stuff that you don't even think is heavy, but when you go back and listen to it, you're like, I guess that is like heavy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, was there a point, you know, where when you're initially just kind of jumping in it and you know just doing whatever that you end up like throwing out your shit. You kind of had to like step back and, you know, ask around or, you know, have uh, some sort of like an opportunity of like, what oh, do I yeah. need to do to kind of I mean, semi-professionally do this? I mean, every time you lose your voice, you think it's going to be the last time you ever, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it's never coming back. It's every time, honestly. But oh, okay. I've probably done it like a million times. Yeah, so. But I, it just, I always, it'll come back and yeah it always comes back but okay. i don't know i probably i probably do it wrong <laughs> <laughs> even even still now i mean it, it works yeah so fuck it. <laughs> um funny thing about that is like i lose it like every time i'm in the studio and um i i've uh like, like when when we were doing, um, I don't know if you 
want to go through each album or what, or if I'm going to get out of, go out of whack if I talk about one before the other. Dude, you, you mentioned, you know, honestly, whatever you want. I, I didn't want this to be a six hour long thing. So I think I kind of chose like a question from each, you know, fear before, but you having a story, dude, I, I, I'm not going to cut that off. <laughs> well, when we did, um, when we did uh, our damage, we had like two weeks with Matthew Ellard, and then we had a week break because he had to do um, "You Fail Me" um, uh, mixing with um, or to do mixing uh, for Converge, and um, that was. Pretty perfect because I had blown my voice out and I had to like take a week off. We went back oh, to, shit. we had to take a week to just piss off in Albany. <laughs> um, so we went up to Equal Vision to just like take a, a week where I could just chill. Damn. And then on, um, on, on that last day of mix saying um matthew eller called us and was like hey jake and kurt uh they're inviting you to god city you guys can come down for the last day of mixing and just hang out while we mix the record or you fail me and we're like Whoa. fucking awesome <laughs> so they they invited us down and they were just so nice to us they they just opened up the place to us and were very friendly and Jake was asking Damn. me asking me questions about my vocals and I'm sure I'm sure Matthew was like asking questions because he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sure he was like asking questions because he's like he's blown his shit out and his timing is off and he's still prepared and he's does everything one line at a time but um <laughs> but he was very friendly uh, and he had a lot of insight and um he had a lot of cool stories too jake was the coolest dude ever so yeah. that was very fun so sick. um but it allowed me some time to to get my shit back because i had blown the fuck out of my, <laughs> my voice but um like i was like I think um, you heard my podcast with Dewey, right? Yeah. The pure pleasure. Yeah. Um, most of the time, I'm up to that point, I, I had always, you know, done like put my hands on the wall and, you know, like tried to push through and like not touch the mic stand. But f for that one record, um, our damage – Matthew let me like actually just hold mic. Um, I don't know what kind of mic it was. It was just like one of those long tubey ones. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, like it. <laughs> it was a mic um, <laughs> with a pop filter on it. But I I did that whole you know that whole record kind of crouched in a ball. You know, just like oh, crouch, just like that, just like uh, like not just the pushing it, comfortable. Yeah. Well, just like gritty, and with each record, like you were saying, how you want yourself to sound. Each each record sounds so different. And I think that's the m most special thing about Fear Before is we always wanted each record to sound different. So you can't, I couldn't sound the same on each record vocally. It would just sound so stupid if I, if I sounded vocally the same. So like on the first one, it is like, it's more bursts of energy. It's like shouty and um, it is more like emo sounding um because it has to those um there's not any distortion on those on the guitars 
it's um it's all very like melodic and um uh dissonant um and so like vocally it has to be like that too it's all shouty and and like um and it has to be like that so if i was doing that um vocally on art damage it would sound really stupid too so it had to be very gritty and like uh it's very more like punk rock and gritty and like it is closer to like uh i guess uh uh more zeoe and like cha uh chaotic and like um i don't know uh distorted on our damage and it had to be you know more of like a ball um of energy on that um and i had to do that differently um on all the records so <clears throat> i guess uh it just different ideas for each record um, um different approaches is like half the battle i guess okay it's yeah. it's always fun to to take new approaches and different stances and you know different ways of opening the body and like for on memory drip i really tried to you know put the mic stand up and like sing you know like open the diaphragm oh, up and like sing okay. almost out of my like nose even for some of them and like oh, yeah shit. it's just awesome. trying everything really yeah so i mean within i i feel like you know the biggest discussion of change was like art damage to always open mouth but there it was even that before as far as for odd you know how people shake into art damage was that like a topic of conversation when art damage was coming up of like we want this to be a little bit of a heavier we want this to seem a little bit more aggressive a little bit more uh hardcore as opposed to you know like the less distortion prior like was that a conversation initially obviously you don't want the same thing twice but yeah yeah well after odd people shake Take, we had offers from major labels so um even the choice of album cover was kind of like a fuck you to like the major labels like that's kind of even capital records on the front cover and a funeral procession coming out was like a it was just like we could be the next major label failure and that was kind of like uh we could that was in an era where we just thought we were like the coolest thing ever <laughs> 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 we were so up ourselves too like you have to like remember the time to yeah. where it, there was a different cocky and like arrogance to shit yeah <laughs> um everybody was doing it too and yeah. i just think we thought we were different and i think that was cool and stupid at the same time <laughs> uh, but it, we were kind of trapped in the middle i think we were a little bit late to the game at the same time um i think we if we would have done it we would have just burnt out at the same time i think we would have put out maybe half the material maybe we would have put out one record and just been done um mm -hmm. it would have probably failed and just been, been done we would probably put a we probably would have put out one record that didn't sound like that and it would have just probably failed and we probably would have just like killed ourselves doing it it probably would have sounded pretty polished and 
and just I don't know burnt ourselves out doing it yeah. and then right. weren't we probably would have not been allowed to do what we wanted to do and it would have killed us so instead we put out three very different records that we wanted to do and burnt ourselves out doing that <laughs> instead yeah so, but with a label you know that backed you and back to the vision of what it was yeah that, you know, and that instead you guys it, yeah, to equal vision allowed us to do three very different records instead of you know one record label or another record label allowing us to do one record that we didn't want to do equal vision let us do three whatever the fuck records we wanted to do and that was more important to us to have yeah that so i think that was more important to us and and so sick i mean uh, along with i mean kind of touching you know with the art damage there was you know some mentions and i was trying to find this recently i don't know where the fuck it, i think it was actually even in my write-up when i interviewed adam um i didn't end up asking him but uh, there was an article or maybe it was an interview about the should have stated in the shadows video being filmed at like a location that fight club was filmed in. Is there yeah. any truth to that? Or yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know how Mike Kaminsky our our manager got that location, but yeah, it was in downtown LA. It's so in the movie, the outside of the location is not the inside of the location. It's like in a parking lot and like, you know, some kind of restaurant, you know, parking lot. Mm -hmm. And then, the, and then it goes inside and it's, you know, the in, like the basement or whatever, not the same thing. It's actually just in an alley. But when we went into the basement at this place, that cardboard that they fought on, you know, like, okay, when, yeah. When like Brad Pitt spits the, the fake blood out, that was still on, on the, like, <laughs> oh, on the shit, cardboard. The there. We, <laughs> oh, dang. We flooded that basement with shit ton more of that, uh, more fake <laughs> blood. Um, uh, 50 Cent filmed um a video in that same basement um as well oh shit. Um, but yeah we we flooded the shit out of that basement <laughs> um, we built like like a pond on like a like a little pond and filmed all night we were on tour at the time with zeo and the agony scene we played in pomona and we were our main support for zeo and we played loaded out uh drove to the location filmed all night lo loaded it out we're completely drenched and it was probably like 10 a.m. Drove to our manager's apartment in uh, Costa Mesa. Tried to shower as much of that shit off of us. And it was just like pink, like coming out of like my hair. My hair was pretty long at the time. It was just like, you know, pink on my skin. Just like, just exhausted. And then, you know, got right back in the van and then drove straight to San Diego, right on the stage, like right, you know, right on the stage, played, barely made set. And I was just like puking on stage <laughs> from exhaustion. You know, we didn't, we didn't oh, sleep shit. a wink. Oh, shit. And it was just miserable, but. Yeah, we, we barely made it, but it was it was awesome. That video turned out great. Like we got pretty uh, heavy rotation on Headbangers Ball with that. Like, yeah, Jamie Jost the uh, was like introduced it uh, for a while there. And yeah. It was awesome. I I remember that album coming out and uh, you know being like knowing the band hearing you know uh hearing the record and then seeing that on headbangers ball and just it was kind of one of those things where i was like 
it kind of felt like, uh, you know, that arrogance of like knowing the hardcore scene and underground music. And it was like, holy shit, how did they get on Headbangers Ball? Like, it was like one of those like early times where like, damn, I did not expect this. And uh, I love every minute of it. It's sick. <laughs> yeah, it was like that, that was happening. And we had our shirts in Hot Topic. Like that was when oh. we had like the palm oh, tree yeah, shirt. The side so, one, yeah. Hot Topic was buying like $10,000 worth of shirts every month. It was fucking Holy nuts. Shit, really? Yeah, that was like oh. that was like peak times. At, like at, at that point, <laughs> the old side print, man. I uh, I kind of forgot about that. I know yeah, I had, yeah, like, yeah. like a a green hoodie. I think it had a yellow print. I'm trying to think of what the fuck it was, but it was a side print. Yeah. Um, it was a fear, it was a fear before sweatshirt. It was green and it had either white or yellow like along the side fuck i gotta go back and look now i hope i hope we still have that thing that thing's sick yeah. so ripping the, the the side print though that's funny <laughs> yeah. forgot about that. yeah. <laughs> uh, next, next with the always open mouth so you and adam have this absolutely killer uh i can't remember what the channel is but it was like an interview with casey who was uh you know part uh one one half of the production who, who was the other cat that uh recorded that record uh, Bobby Darling, he, Bobby, he was the right, guitar okay. player from um, uh, Gatsby's American Dream. Yeah, okay, okay. Now, so as far as, well, and that's, I mean, that's sick because, you know, kind of full circle coming back and, you know, doing the show with them. Uh, that, that rips, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he's, he's not playing with them, unfortunately, but he is given, okay. bless he's given blessing. Sure, sure, okay. So with within this, you do an interview with Casey and you guys do a breakdown. There is absolutely just rad uh, stripped down versions of the song, the demos, different stuff. But you mentioned a Fear Before Bible as far as the writing of this. I'd asked Adam and he wasn't quite sure. What, what, the, what is this? A little more context here. Uh, well, I mean, that's what Casey called it. And that was just his version of like, he had, we all had our own like journals and stuff, but Casey called it the Bible because it was like the collective one. And he was like, oh, oh, okay. It was like his idea book that he called the Bible. Like, oh, if you have an idea, put it in the Bible because it was like <laughs> his idea book was like, oh, if you have an idea for the, a sample, like put it in the Bible. Like, oh. We have an idea. <laughs> put it in the Bible. Like we had uh, sick. Um, a ton of ideas for samples, and like there was shit like, uh, like we had stuff like uh, eating like watermelon and like chains and trains and all kinds of shit for like samples and other like quotes and movie samples and yeah and uh other shit like that i had never noticed the watermelon bit until hearing that and then listening back uh which by itself a is fucking disgusting I, I <laughs> yeah. <have> to mention. <laughs> yeah. but, but <laughs> did not like encourage me whatsoever to want to eat uh you know watermelon in the uh in the distant future but <laughs> but listening back you know like that was a cool thing and i have to say as far as you know myself and, and being a fan Odd how people shake our damage were rad. Like I always thought that those were cool. When Always Open Mouth came out though, that was like my dawning for the band. That was where, you know, when a lot of people were like, oh man, I don't know what they did, you know, or I shouldn't say a lot of people, but some of my friends were like, man, I, I'm not like as big into it. I didn't get it because that was like my like awakening to like, holy shit, this man's fucking awesome. Yeah. And uh, I don't with it just being so different. It's like to me, me that that one's like the ear candy you know oh, i was always into records that you know you could dive into um like uh melancholy and the infinite sadness where you know oh, yeah. there was so much to listen to i those were the interesting ones like white pony um, yes the, yes. the ear candy you know where you could listen to it really loud and like so much more was there, I, I loved that shit. I don't know what people were thinking to think that 
that wasn't cool. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was a, it made me a fan of my own shit to like, oh, there's so many layers and to, I don't know, to be able to crank it up up and hear other layers of my own voice was so cool to me. <laughs> I don't know. I, like, even if, you know, just to like sit back and record my own vocals sitting, like, like I said, even like I said, different ways of recording my voice. I was sitting on a couch or recording, recording vocals drunk without, <laughs> without hearing, um, without uh, uh, hearing the song. I was recording tracks without headphones on and hearing the music. I was just m memorizing the part and you know with a mic over at the other end just shouting the lyrics at the mic you know just from memory after taking you know eight shots of tequila <laughs> <laughs> and and then playing we golf until i passed out and then you know having to get up after passing out and doing the vocal take that way and just like experimenting <laughs> like that you know uh that was that a fun so day at the awesome. studio you know that after we awesome. all pass out <laughs> that was just the fun day at the studio <laughs> and it's funny too because like after hearing that story there's like a story behind i don't know if you ever listened to the repos or if you are like have done like a big deep dive on them but one of their records uh aaron the vocalist had gone through a whole night and did like a whole night of just tracking while he was just fucked up drunk and high and all this shit. They actually kept that in, but the following days like recorded like a clean track with it. So you can still hear through the whole record, like this really messy, just like sloshiness. Yeah. And then there's like a you cleanness can't do that. to it you too. Can't you know, do it's that like much, but you can do that for like a part, you know, and it's right, like, right. it, it's just, um, it works for, you know, so it works for something I, I i love that you know and the always open mouth too like it brings me back a time uh you know it's it just kind of going back in memories is 10 seconds to los angeles was my myspace track either that or cherry waves by deftones and it was like that was where i was at you know so it's like funny even thinking back to that time where like myspace and like having a track and like top eight or whatever the fuck it was like there was uh, so much going on, but dude, that album honestly like pushed me into and then continuing into uh, self-title, you know, and the album coming out. And I remember initially thinking that it was another band like trying to rip you guys off until I yeah, saw that was just the label. That idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, where where was the discussion? Was it just from like you know fans over the years of saying you know fear before as opposed to the whole title? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I think that was Casey's fault. <laughs> I think it, it was Casey and oh man, and I don't know. I I think I was probably talked into it pretty quickly though. I think it was like Casey and then Dan and then probably I was probably a quickly like a third. Like okay, that makes sense because everybody did call us that. So yeah, right. Um, it wasn't anything like so out of it or like renaming the band, you know, it was just kind of one of those things where I was like, I mean, it's yeah. a little bit of a different look. And I, I, I remember being like, is this the right fucking thing? I don't know. Yeah. Everybody called us that. It was a, you know, everybody was like, I liked you better when you were FBTMOF. You're like, you can't even fucking say it once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, Shut the fuck up. Like, or like, <laughs> Literally abbreviating it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, shit, yeah. that is fucking funny. I, so, I, I, you know, I don't even want to mess with that shit anymore. I, I'll, I'll leave that there. And what I, what I do want to ask is there was at one point or another, uh, you know, in a write-up, a, a uh, working title for a song called STD Face. What, what track was that? Do you remember? 
Uh, that was was that on? I think it was supposed to be for the self title record. To be honest, like there was so many. Like whenever there was a mock title, I always did my best to name it as fast as I could because I knew as long as it was like there was a mock title that it People was. The, well, it was, as long as it was there, the, it was in danger of becoming like the, <laughs> a title. So I, it needed to be replaced as fast as possible. <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, it shit. probably was... I couldn't tell you, honestly. I wish I could. Perfect. Uh, no, that, that's that's cool. That's cool. I, I can dig it. Uh, I, I do want to ask, you know, as far as jogging your memory. Yeah, and this is some years back. So obviously, you know, kind of like when I was talking with Adam, I didn't, you know, it's it's no shame because uh, this is quite a while back, which is as far as, you know, a memory that you may have. A favorite track of mine being Stay Weird. Uh, you know, what, what comes to mind as far as maybe working on that track, uh, you know, your vocal performance and how that changed with this album and, uh, and this song, writing. Stay Weird was about you know people giving up on us um too early um we actually got dropped from our booking agency and well nick storch before he even heard that album um oh sure so yeah um and that was during always open mouth so we got dropped during that album cycle which should have been in my eyes our biggest um album mm -hmm. and i i just don't think he knew what to do with us and anybody you know when we should have been pitched probably for some of the coolest tours we just didn't get any offers or any creative offers uh, i don't know if we were just being difficult or we just weren't getting cool offers. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, we we might have been being difficult, but we, I'll, I'll give a little insight. Like we, when we were like, like putting together that like first headlining tour, the opening like the first of four that he wanted to put on the tour was gym class heroes and we said no we want follow troy and he, he was like no i want it to be gym class heroes and we said no we want it to be follow troy and it ended up being the coolest tour we did it was follow troy opened since by man and bearber shark and Whoa, it was the coolest shit. it was still the coolest tour and what happened after that tour he picked up fall of troy and <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> and they got every tour that we wanted after that <laughs> Oh no! Shit. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I'm glad I thought of this, man. You know, out of yeah. the way, Dave. Fuck. Oh, oh. That's, uh, that's <laughs> so I mean, you know what? Paul and Troy does they, rock, though. Like, they, but, of um, course they rock. Yeah. Of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> shit. And yeah, somebody mentioned Sense by Man. That man, Bearford Shark. Holy shit. I'm going to have to go back and like deep dive into these cats again because it's been a while, oh, yeah. dude. Holy fuck. Bearford Shark, like, they like inter swapped band members like during the or instruments during the their sets right yep 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 they i fucking love hard all those guys i love all Dude, those guys so so sick uh i have to look, do you know are they still doing stuff oh, are they around still or, no no no, no bear uh, shark. bars of gold check out bars of gold is that a, it's a, a new band yeah oh oh shit okay bars of i gotta write this down bars sick yeah, absolutely. That that rips. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, honestly, man, this has been so so sick. I mean, I didn't want to keep you for damn near fucking two hours or all of your 
afternoon here, uh, your morning. But uh, this has been so oh, I did rad, wanna, man. I, I, I really did appreciate want to mention because you're, I know you're the lo fi horror guy that, you know, 237. I did want to touch on that, though. Uh, uh, dude, please, please. Absolutely. Uh, Masters of Horror. Yeah, because um, that uh, Toby Hooper um, movie, um, we, I don't know how we got offered. I think it was just through Equal Vision, but the, the Masters of Horror, um, it was, well, it was through Immortal Records. So maybe that came through Kaminsky, because um, I know he had oh, okay. uh, a tie with them. Um, our, and they released a sound track right yeah yeah and okay. so maybe that came through uh through our, our manager but i was, was obsessed with the shining so i just okay i walk i that was like one of those old dvds that where if you just put it in it plays the you know if you put it in it only plays the menu for like one or two, two times and then it just restarts yeah, yeah so it just played in my room for like days <laughs> i just kept it on <laughs> and, and the shining was on loop for like a week or something and I, <laughs> I i just wrote that song and that was um that was a just a in-between phase song um uh a song in between i think art damage and always open mouth so oh shit. Okay. it was kind of like this kind of in between um electronic -y vibe where we were kind of getting into that phase of um experiment so it has this like it gets into that weird kind of dancey thing um that i don't think adam liked the dance beat in that song that oh, dude. but i like it a lot um, so sick uh but I, the coolest thing about the that episode that we're in is that Billy Corgan does the music of that episode. So he's at least heard that song. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because that song plays when the title or when the title uh credits credits um play. So he yeah. at least had to place it there. And yeah. <laughs> Right? So you're saying I've got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> there's a chance you at least put it there. So I'm, I, I'm, oh, I, man. I'm going with it. Dude, and I, I have to say, too, like, you know, kind of just in my messages and, and, and relaying, I literally had, I think, seven or eight pages typed up, you know, and I'm trying to dwindle this down because, like, I didn't want this to just go, like, ridiculous. But, um, you know, Fear Before was truthfully one of my favorite bands, and still to this day, I play through the, 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 the drums to them, uh, practice a lot. Uh, Goose is a maniac oh, on yeah. the uh, on the, the latter so album, uh, you know. And, 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 oh, and honestly, um, the, what the he's doing now? Trip, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, man. I'm he's excited. I don't know. I don't know anything about it, but uh, I'm I'm excited for sure. Well, you still talk to him? Oh, all the time, yeah. Oh man, and That's fucking awesome. his his brother Josh is his he's so cool. Um, he's going to be doing a remix for um, Good for It. Oh shit! Okay, it's awesome. Damn. So I, I mean, a lot still going on, and uh, yeah, you know, I mean, even even without this stuff, man, there's been people. Uh, luckily looking into it, you know, for this, but people have been mentioning for a long time as far as for fear before and for, uh, I, I think, you know, once this comes out, people are going to be fucking more than satisfied with memory drip and, uh, be happy that, you know, you're just doing something again, dude. You know, we've, uh, we've been missing you on the, on the vocals. So thank you very much. Thanks dude. <laughs> um, well, this, <laughs> totally. will be, this will be up for like rewatch and stuff too, yep. right? 
So I'll get it edited so it's not so goofy with the vertical look and shit, and I'll have it up on YouTube. Um, I'll, uh, you know, promote it on here and everything, and I'll try to get it out here uh, before the, 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 the next week. So uh, it's uh, about, about just before, like, the EP. Awesome. So, yeah, man, this has been so sick, dude. Thank you, uh, honestly, so, so much once again. This has been great, Dave. Well, thanks for bearing with me while I got through the most of that, like, awkward, weird migraine. Ugh. Oh, good, dude. Oh, good. This has been fucking cool. You're, you're just a time, you know, uh, uh, being being patient. So I, uh, I I thank you very much, man. I'll uh, keep in touch and uh, take care of yourself, dude. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, man. See ya. See ya, dude. You're so lo-fi, lo-fi, a whole guy. Yeah, baby, baby. Lo-Fi Horror Guy has been recorded in front of a live studio audience.